Hello, welcome to today's edition of Talking Tech. My name is Juna Mwapoko. In today's edition, we shall be focusing on technology, as usual, Nollywood, and investing, the everything in between. And that's because I have someone very capable to discuss this with me. Yeah. My guest today needs no too much intro- introduction, and that's because he's a serial entrepreneur, uh, a film magnet, an African tech investor. Uh, it is no other person than our own Jason Njoko, the CEO and founder of Iroko TA. Jason, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Let me start from your decision as an investor to come into Africa. As far as internet-based services are, are concerned, many people, especially investors, see Africa as a trouble spot, sure. you know, due to lack of basic infrastructure from electricity to broadband, you know. But you came with um, video on demand service, the first in Africa, and you chose Nigeria. You know, six years down the lane, would you say that had been a very smart investment decision? I think I needed to be in Nigeria, so I came to Nigeria. I think um, most successful businesses in Nigeria, they need the founders or the owners very, very close to the business, otherwise it won't work. So I think in as much as I'm a a technology kind of sort of hard and so business, um, as long as there is a significant Nigerian component, I will need to be here for the ongoing future. So, you know, going back six years ago, it was obviously a very different place. Um, I, I'm always of the opinion that I'd rather be early than, than be late. Um, and even if you have to, ha- you know, waste extra money or spend extra time or have you know, require a different kind of patience, um, I'm always happy to, to, ha- to have that as, as just, you know, the rite of passage, if you will. <laughs> so, you know... Nigeria chose me because I'm building a business which is at core, uh, uh, you know, about exporting Nigerian content and obviously consuming Nigerian content. So I need to be here as close to the market as possible. Um, and I think, you know, all like all countries in sub-Saharan Africa have their individual challenges. Um, but what no other country has is the depth and the breadth and the size of the audience that Nigeria has. So I think. Outside of being in South Africa and trying to build a business out of South Africa, I think the second choice for most people will definitely be uh, Nigeria. So um, I'm Nigerian, so that kind of helps as well. Um, but you know, I think it's it, it, it always had to be built this way, and I don't, there's no there was no alternative way of building this. So six years down the lane, there is no regret so far. You know? Absolutely not. Yeah, I landed in Lagos. I found a, a woman who became my wife. She gave me three beautiful <laughs> children. You know, I think for all intents and purposes, you know, I'm completely blessed. So and and I'm, as far I'm, as Iroko TV is concerned? In terms of Iroko TV, oh, now we're talking. Um, no, I think it's... We're still super early. Um, you know, I think one thing that I've always had is had patience. And I think being in Nigeria kind of gives you a different threshold when it comes to payment, uh, patients. Um, I think the market here is so difficult, but I think it'll actually still be really difficult for the foreseeable future. Um, you know, I think it's it's not like it's difficult just for me, it's difficult for, like, everybody. And it's not a matter of how much money you have, it's not a question of what your tech skills are, it's just a really, really difficult market. And, you know, recently I was joking that the three things which have done really well over the last uh, t- uh, two years in Nigeria... And whilst we've had this economic recession, sports betting has done incredibly well and is still thriving. MMM, which did incredibly well <laughs> and made its founders huge amounts of money. So that was the first tech exit um, we've ever seen in Nigeria. And then Andela um, seems to be like immune from everything else which is happening here locally. So I think outside of those three um, kind of movements, everybody else has basically suffered. Hmm. Awesome. But we have seen, even in the past, uh, say the last three years, I've seen some video on demand service coming and in less than one year they, they had to run away. Yeah. It's if we were at core a digital only business, mm-hmm. we would have died a couple of years ago. Like that one goes without saying. Um, but early on we established that we need to be in the market for a really long time. In order to be in the market for a really long time, we need to be, build the fundamental infrastructure so if it's content, we just can't be licensing content. We're going to have to produce it ourselves. So that's going to take two or three years to basically figure out that part. You know, there's no version of that we're going to sit in our offices and hopefully we're going to sign up for our service and pay. We need to go sort of like help people do that. So again, we launched the kiosks. 
been incredibly successful here in Nigeria. We've launched in Ghana, um, November 1. Yeah. December 1, we're launching in Kenya, mm-hmm. uh, Nairobi. So I've just come out from Nairobi last week. Um, so we, we kind of know that it's just going to be a much more sort of slower city by city rollout. You know, the scalability will be there, but it will be there like in a few years' time as opposed to being now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's it's a really, really difficult market. Um, you have to be incredibly like um, long term thinking. If you don't think long term, you're basically going to be out of business. Mm. I'll come to the to, to the uh, issue of kiosks sure. later, later in the interview. But now I'm going to ask you about um, uh, the relationship with telcos. You know, the, the telecommunications companies, they wide a lot of influence here in the digital space uh, because of the role they play in broadband access. Sure. So one would have thought that, you know, a partnership, you know, with one of them could, could it's, it's, it's an, it should be an obvious direction. The most obvious direction. Yes. And every day people tell me that is the most obvious yes. thing we should have done. Yes. Um, I think, look, the telcos are going through a massive shift in their business model. They're going from a voice and SMS sort of product line driven business to a data and value added services type business. Um, At the same time, these are really big mature companies and they need to generate profits. They need to generate um, to pay sort of like their capex and sort of need to generate like huge amounts of cash for dividends and other kind of shareholders and stuff like that. So, you know, their, their first perspective is always to defend their margins they need to kind of defend their margins and the challenge is that voice and sms incredibly high margin data incredibly expensive and not like not high margin at all so any type of relationship we try to do with them there is always that in the background sense that um they need to make much more of the margin than you do um and i think as a as a sort of fledgling business it's really difficult to kind of accept some of the terms that they, that they put in front of you granted yes they have hundreds of thousands of so tens of millions of subscribers mm-hmm. yes they have the infrastructure yes they have the customers but at the same time look whatsapp facebook instagram snapchat those guys are sitting in san francisco and they're they're basically what's taking up all their day in the network so i think um i think with time we'll have the exact same relationship where iraq will be like a big sort of like contributor to the network um, capacity for them um but in terms of us trying to do a deal we've, we've been open we've been trying to speak to them for a bunch of time um, we found actually more success in um, dealing in Ghana and, and, and Kenya with telcos, um, Rwanda, with telcos. Yeah. Um, there is something very different about Nigerian telcos and I can't uh, maybe it's just a Nigerian thing so you are yet to place your fingers on it we've done no deal with anybody here locally um, I don't, we have nothing in the pipeline locally um, but again we're open Like we're, we're not against it um, but, but the times that you do get to meet with them and discuss this, what are the, what are usually their their constraints? So, where was I? I was at a I was in a meeting with a telco myself personally back yes. in two thousand and fourteen, and you know it's about four or five of the telco guys, and they were like, "Look, um, what you guys are doing is, is cute, it's nice, it's sweet, but it's a bit small." Um, what we anticipate with our 20, 30, 40 million customers, whatever it was, Mm. um, is that we'll launch a service and we'll just kind of like take the market. And Mm. I was like, here's me toiling away. I think I know, I'm at least at the bleeding edge of what um, sort of uh, paid content is in Africa. So I at least know something or the other. Um, So just a kind of like institutional arrogance, which is like, you know what, perhaps perhaps I need to find an alternative way. And that alternative way was the Beyond Data initiative. in order for us to kind of like bet the entire company on that, we had to stop speaking to telcos. So we kind of just paused all telco mm-hmm. conversations and said, let's try and kind of go outside of something which they can't replicate mm-hmm. um, and, and try to um, imagine what that would look like and then basically build for that. Mm-hmm. And I think if we look at the, the, the core the core spirit of Beyond Data is there's three people in this room. If I have movie files, I can move them to you yeah. as long as you have any Rocco TV yeah. app. I can move them to you as long as you have a TV app, no data. Awesome. Like, that is completely the opposite view of the way a telco would look at the world in terms of, what well, I want to sell you data, right? Whereas I don't care about data. What I care about is your only Rocco TV subscriber. Sure. As long as I can sort of verify that you're only Rocco TV subscriber, then I don't care how you get that content. 
Awesome. So for, for us, it's, uh, we've, we've built this technology. We're super excited about it. It took us two years or two and a half years. Um, it's something which no one else has. It's, it's something which I think is definitely redefining what it means to sort of deliver content to people here in Africa. But you're still open to a telco partnership. We, we have telco in, in, in Kenya, in, in Kenya, in Ghana. We have telco um, partnerships. Um, if not live before the end of the year, definitely like early next year. So we're definitely talking to the telco. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Um, let me. Uh, last year, the Rock the Rock Channel came on stream. Yes. And uh, from, I am a fan of Rock, Rock Channel, and I know there are millions of Nigerians yes. who are hooked on to that channel every day. And you, you, in some post you made, you also admitted it's been quite. A, it's a problem. Uh, amazing. It's a, right? it's a big problem for you, TV. Yes. So uh, that's what where I'm going. You know. Please, how do you describe the success of Rock, the impact on your team? So, when 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 my wife started producing content, outside of Rock TV, there was no independent um, kind of quality check for us. So we knew it was good content, but nobody else knew it was good content. So when we started speaking to some of the telcos, uh, not telcos, sorry, some of the pay TV operators, yeah. who, who are our partners, and we partner with pretty much, of the top five pay TV operators in Africa, we partner with like four of them. Um, and when the opportunity to get the channel came about, um, you know, one, we were shocked because we were like, you know, it's a great opportunity for us to showcase the content. Um, but in terms of how well the channel has done over the last one year, mm-hmm. um, it's completely outside of our imagination. And I think when you look at the fact that, you know, for example, Africa Magic has like seven or eight channels and have done incredibly well and served the needs of everybody mm-hmm. for the best part of like 10, or however, maybe 10 years or however long it's been around. Um, and they do like a great job over there. So no one ever believed that a new channel could come with like a fresh perspective yeah. to actually have any impact whatsoever. So what we've seen is that um, the rock killers have like a dramatic impact um, First in the UK when we launched, you know, had a dramatic impact in that market. When it came to Nigeria, equally had a dramatic impact on that market. And I think it's sort of testament to like my wife's uh, approach to filmmaking. Right? You know, her view was Nollywood used to be all about the stories. Mm-hmm. So let's go back to the stories. Mm-hmm. We don't have big budgets, so we can't compete with the African magics of the world. If the big, if the big superstars are telling us big prices, we can't afford those prices. We'll go and find new stars. So I think the spirit of, of rock, again, is very much the spirit of rock, but at the same time, it's, it's like finding new talent, it's doing things in a slightly different way, it's doing things in an incredibly like, cost-efficient manner as well. Um, and I think for all intents and purposes, like, the proof is in the pudding, right? it is an incredibly well-received channel, people are genuinely enjoying it, they absolutely love it. And I think it's interesting for me sitting there as a rock on TV, realising that the exact same content that is on rock is in rock on TV. Mm-hmm. But millions of people are enjoying work right across Africa mm-hmm. and um, don't even know that Iwoku TV exists. Yes. So I guess that therein lies the power of a big brand, a big distribution. So in 20 years time we want to be an equivalent of DSTV on the internet mm-hmm. but it'll take us 20 years to get there. So, so, so in the future if rock continues at the rate it is going how will that affect Iwoku TV? So I think we've essentially built a business for people who don't have pay TV. That is a essential ambition. So it's mm-hmm. an Android phone yeah. um, and there's no need for data. So we're kind of building it for the base. Our price point is like 2000 naira a year. I think most people are going to afford 2000 naira a year. Yeah. So um, again, there's only 18 million people who have pay TV in, in Africa. There's a billion people, about 800 million of those we believe will have uh, cell phones or at least smartphones by um, by like 2025. So we're essentially building for people who don't have pay TV. So for all the people who have, you know, DSTV, mm-hmm. and again, this is DSTV at 6,000 yes. naira a month. Yeah. So it's not like DSTV for the masses. No, no. Um, it's DSTV for 6,000 naira a month. Perhaps at some point you would still go to pay TV, you know, at the, the basic channels. <laughs> but, but the thing is that it's, look, it's, um, the Rock Channel launched one year. We've been toiling away at the Rock TV. Rock Channel is more popular in Africa yeah. than, than, than the Iwaku TV. Yes. And, and that also brings me to some concerns that others raise that Rock will may, may displace African magic. I think there are two different perspectives, right? I think African magic have been there for a really long time. I think Wangi and the team, they're doing a great job. Um, I think 
there is something that Rock has been able to capture, which African Magic was never able to capture. And I think it's, again, if you look at the, the content which is being created, if you look at the um, the producers who are, are working within our sort of network of production houses that we work with, they're not people who otherwise would have been having the opportunity to be on African Magic. Yes. But what's happening is that people who are within that network, they aspire to go and shoot something big for African Magic. But they have to get a start, right? So, you know, uh, Mary, my wife, spends a lot of time finding new talent, discovering new talent, because there are loads of talented people. And I think the great thing about um, creativity is you either have it or you don't. There are some people who can walk into a room who have never acted before, boom, and it's just like, oh my God, this person is amazing. And there was recently a um, a uh, an audition which they ran for like three yeah. or four days. It's like two and a half thousand people turned up. And there was a young lady who literally walked in to do an audition, knocked it out. And she asked, my, my wife asked her, was like, have you acted before? She was like, no. They're like, we don't believe it. We don't believe that you have never acted before. She's never seen someone who was so natural. She literally walked in and was just like, knocked it out. But she couldn't believe that this girl had never been to auditions, never had training, never travelled abroad. But sometimes you can just like act. And I think that's a degree of creativity. And you know, the great thing as well is that... Um, you know, if you look at some of the, like the the the, the no emerging stars like Nino and yeah. Kenneth, like a lot of those guys, their 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 content base is essentially rock, right? Um, so I think, you know, we um, we believe that it's not about money; it's about pure creativity. Um, I don't think we'll, no one will ever be able to uh, sort of displace African magic. I think we just bring something new and fresh to the table. Mm. Awesome. Uh, I think we'll go on a short break, and then when we come back. We continue the conversation. <laughs> 